everyone and welcome back to another summer review and yes over the next four parts we're going to be diving into some of Nintendo's consoles as my recent purchase of my Super Nintendo kiosk has had me all tied up and playing some great old retro games and has made me all nostalgic. Now I'm not going to be reviewing them in any particular order but the first we're going to be looking at is the Nintendo GameCube. Just before we do dive into the GameCube review, I've actually got a huge shout out and a big thank you to say to the 8 Comic Book Nerd 9 because he's provided me with some extremely rare footage of a prototype to the GameCube. And most of you may already know that the actual prototype to the GameCube was called the Dolphin and that footage will be coming up in a few minutes or so. So please check out the 8 Comic Book Nerd 9's channel because he's an extremely cool guy completely down to earth, he's from the UK, he's a massive gaming fan and one of my favourite videos from him was actually a, a prototype of an Atari Jaguar virtual reality helmet, so go check this guy's channel out. Well like most video games consoles, the Nintendo GameCube started life out on a drawing board and its codename was the Dolphin, and evidence can actually be seen on all Nintendo GameCube hardware underneath as all the model numbers start with the abbreviation DOL, short for Dolphin. But I'd never actually seen a prototype of the GameCube or the Dolphin until the other day, and courtesy of 8 Comic Book Nerd 9's channel, he's provided me with some. <laughs> the finished model looked like this and it was finally launched between the dates of 2001 and 2002 and was released in two primary colours indigo and jet black and later models saw the release of a platinum and a white model added to the colour scheme the Nintendo GameCube was also the first Nintendo games console to be released outside Japan to use discs rather than the traditional cartridges that we had all been used to up until this point. And these discs turned out to be half the size of DVD discs and this was to prevent copyright issues and some other factors. And this also meant that there would be no DVD compatibility which meant that two other main players in the 6th generation war, Xbox and PlayStation 2, had the upper hand and had an extra selling point which was a real shame. The GameCube's games were driven by a 486MHz IBM processing unit also known as the Gecko and the graphics were produced by ATI which were nicknamed Flipper which was another direct relation to the original codename Dolphin. The GameCube was finally discontinued around 2007 and ended ended up selling less units than its predecessor, the Nintendo 64, and was left well behind in the 6th generation race as the PlayStation 2 thrashed everyone. But the legacy of games that were released and left for us to play are some of the best that Nintendo and other third parties have released over the years. And even though Nintendo's GameCube didn't fare too well against other brands, doesn't mean it was rubbish or not worth picking up, because actually I see it as one of the most underrated and enjoyable consoles to play and check out. And the game's library holds over 600 games to play. Both GameCube packs I own come bundled with a game and as you can see I have Mario Smash Football and the limited edition pack containing The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. But other than the games that are bundled inside the contents is exactly the same as you simply receive the game corresponding to the pack. One GameCube controller, a power lead, an AV lead, the manuals and of course the GameCube. If we now get a closer look at the GameCube, you can see I've lined up two GameCubes side by side and even though they look the same here, they do actually differ slightly from one another, which I'll come to in a moment. But all GameCubes have power buttons, reset buttons and eject buttons. Inside the GameCube lays the lens and a push button to allow you to release your games easily and all GameCubes have four controller ports and two memory card ports. 
On the left hand side of the GameCube you have an exhaust vent and on the right hand side you have the intake vent. At the back you have a carrying handle for taking it just about anywhere and just underneath that you have a digital AV out and a regular AV port. Although on later models like the white one here the digital port was removed. And finally on the underside all models have a high speed port mainly for connecting your Game Boy player and also you have two serial ports on earlier models and one serial port on the later models as port 2 was never ever used. But for port 1 is used for connecting your modem adapter or broadband adapter. Well that's the console out of the way so let's take a look at the controller which is one game controller I've always enjoyed using as it's really comfortable to hold and certainly does not feel awkward in any way. On the controller you have an analog stick, a control pad, your usual start and select buttons, an excellent C control stick which is mostly used for camera panning during gameplay and you also have your B, A, Y and X buttons. Plus on the top you have a Z button and also you have two trigger buttons left and right and then as always it's just a case of setting up and now we're going to take a look at the GameCube in action. Well the Nintendo GameCube has a vast array of games to check out and so if I was to define some of my favourite moments to you during my time playing that system then first of all I would have to say bongos. Yes the Donkey Konger bongos were an extremely fun and innovative way to interact with a totally new game featuring our best buddy Donkey Kong which also made for a pretty thrilling two player battle. Next up I always enjoy playing FIFA games and when the football stadium mat was produced during the World Cup in 2002 I had to pick one up and even though it's fairly awkward to use well personally it doesn't really matter as I'm all about interacting with games in different ways and this was one of them. And finally, if I were to define my favourite gaming moment, well, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker would have to be it. As after having an operation, this game was there during my six week recovery period and it was absolutely sensational. As the scale of exploration and adventure is incredible and I love the fresh colourful graphics which actually split public opinion. And if I were to recommend the game, well, look no further. And if you're not sure whether to pick up a GameCube or not, well, let it be noted that all GameCube games are compatible with the Nintendo Wii. Can you play it in? And the cross went in the hands of the keeper. Keep the flowers. You know, the GameCube is much undiscovered for me, and what I mean by that is that there are plenty of games out there that I've yet to find and play. As towards 2005-2006, uh, GameCube games started to disappear from the shops and just in general when GameCube games were around they were always quite hard to find and the store displays were a lot smaller compared to the likes of the Xbox and the PlayStation 2. I've also got to mention that I think it's a real shame that the online feature was not represented more and that there were only ever a handful of games that supported this feature in the end. And I also found it a real struggle to find a broadband adapter anyway and I had to settle for the regular modem which didn't really help either. But if you fancy picking up a Nintendo GameCube, I definitely don't think that you will be disappointed as there are tons of great titles out there to check out and all Nintendo franchises were represented extremely well and there are a mountain of third party titles out there too. In total, the GameCube is a small compact unit with a very comfy controller, excellent games and pretty cool graphics, but lacks certain features that other competitors pushed to help sales like the DVD feature and more online gaming. But to me, none of this really matters as I think it's a super console and one I still use a lot. Well today when it comes to picking up a Nintendo GameCube, you shouldn't really expect to pay anything from around 20 to 50 pounds or 20 to 50 dollars. Of course this depends whether or not you want the box, instructions, the GameCube, the controller and a few games bundled in. But in general you should be able to pick up a console on its own from anything for as little as 5 to 15 dollars or 5 to 15 pounds. When it comes to actually picking up Nintendo GameCube games, well some, some games are actually Actually becoming harder to find than others and typical titles like Mario and Zelda can actually still sell for good money. Um, 
from anything from sort of eight to 15 pounds or eight to 15 dollars and maybe even more and as usual good luck and happy hunting well that pretty much wraps things up for today but I'll be back next Sunday with another Nintendo console review and if you fancy checking out my top 10 GameCube games list which you may have already missed then there'll be a link at the end of this video. But until next weekend, have a great week, take care and I'll see you soon.